Hi, I'm Rick Wright, a career specialist with the Career Center, which is a free service of the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. And in this video, we would like to show you how to apply for a job with FedEx. First, we want to show you the Career Center website, which is careercenterbr.com, that has a wealth of resources to help you with your career or job search. Let me take myself out of the picture. And when you're ready, with a web browser open, it should not matter which one, click in the address bar and type fedx.com and hit enter. All right, if you have not been to the FedEx website yet, first it would like to know where you are and what language you prefer. We're in the United States and we're gonna choose English. Now, when you're applying for a job with most companies, you go to the company's website and the way you apply for a job, you wanna look for something that says jobs or careers. It's usually at the bottom of the homepage. So click on this bar, drag it all the way down to the bottom and look for careers. There it is, click on that. Now, before you continue, we've done a practice run through there's going to need, there are a few things you will need. You want to have your driver's license ready. You also need to have your work history ready. And the name and contact information for supervisor or supervisors. And you need to provide at least five years of your work history as well. So you need to be ready for that. When you're ready and you have that information on hand, click in location. With most companies, you don't begin by looking for jobs. You want to look by location. Otherwise, they're going to show job openings across the country. Click on, in this case, Baton Rouge, LA, United States. We can say, yeah, go ahead and know my location. Click on find jobs. All right. There's a list of eight results for FedEx jobs in the Baton Rouge area. This is within a 10 mile radius. If you wish, you can click on this, kick it up to 25, see if that makes a difference. No, nope, we still get eight results. So what you wanna do is look through the list of job openings. Uh, we have to approve cookies. Some websites you have to agree to cookies or else you cannot continue. We've seen this a couple of times. So you can look through the list of jobs and see which one of these would you like to apply for. For the sake of this video, let's choose part-time courier, non-DOT, and so on. When you're ready, click on Click to Apply. All right, this is where a lot of people get tripped up. It brings you to a login screen, but unless you have applied for a job with FedEx, you can't because you don't have a profile yet, so you want to create an account. Click on or create your account. All right, we're going to use a fictional person who is Jane Public. You can use, you can click in each box to add the information. And Jane Q Public's email address and then type it again. That's just to make sure you typed it correctly and there is no mistakes. You use your email address and it's important that it's an email address that you know the password and you are able to log into it. If you can't, that can create a roadblock later. Password, now, we have a video on how to create good passwords for websites or for a new email account. It doesn't provide any information on what the password requirements are. If it's wrong, they'll let you know what the requirements are. Usually at least eight characters, at least one letter, one number, sometimes a capital letter, also a symbol such as an exclamation mark or dollar sign. Another important thing is before you continue, have a piece of paper, write down the website, in this case, FedEx, Write down what email address you used, write down what 
password you created. It is imperative that you do this or else it will cause problems for you later. When you're ready, click on register. You can tell your web browser to remember the password. We don't want to do that for the purposes of this video, so never. All right. Right away, they give you the option of uploading your resume. If you have a copy of your resume, usually in Microsoft Word or Adobe Acrobat format on the computer you are using, if you upload your resume, the website will read your resume and use it to fill out most of the application. And we sometimes do this in our walkthrough videos. For the purposes of this video, we're not going to do that. By the way, if you do have it, they tell you it has to be a, a PDF, a DOC, that's Microsoft Word, DOCX, more recent version of Word, or RTF, rich text formats. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to add the information manually. So when you're ready, click on Next. They provide you a, a series of questions you need to answer. Are you 18 or older? Yes. Are you legally authorized to work in the United States? such as you're born in the United States, you're an American citizen, or you have your immigration status is such that you can work. Yes. This trips people up a little bit. Will you now or do you require sponsorship for employment visa status, such as H-1B? Basically, in order to work for FedEx or any other company, you need your potential employer to talk to immigration to get you a work authorization. In this case, no. Do you meet the minimum qualifications for the position you are applying for, including education? We didn't, I didn't, we didn't pause to take a look at those. Let's assume that we did, and the answer is yes. If you're applying for a driving position, which we are, are you at least 21? Do you have a valid driver's license and have had it for three years at least? Yes. If you're applying for a DOT driving position, which we are, can you meet the physical requirements? And they provide a link that you can click on to see what those are. Actually, it's not a link, it's an address. You have to copy and paste it into a web browser. Do you have the physical qualifications to operate a commercial vehicle or can you obtain a waiver? Yes. If you're applying for a position that requires a CDL, do you understand and commit to alcohol and controlled substance testing requirements? Well, whether we are or not, it's probably a good idea to say, yeah, you can, you can test us. Click on next. My information. They want us, they actually begin by asking for your country. Now, FedEx is a little different. We don't have boxes in which we add the information. They have lines, which are like boxes. Anytime you see something like a down arrow, it means there's a list of choices. So click on the arrow. And in this case, we're in the United States of America and they very helpfully provide it at the top of the list so that we don't have to click and drag all the way down to the bottom. So the United States of America. When you're ready, click on next. Name, we're gonna use the fictional person, Jane Public. So click on the line, Jane. Click on the next line, public. It helps to use perfect punctuation, such as capitalize the first letter. Address line one. We're gonna use the library's address. You use your address, not ours. City, state. Again, there's a drop down menu and you can use the scroll wheel or click on the little bar, drag it down to Louisiana. And you have to choose the answer, you cannot type it. We did a practice run in which I typed the answer and the website did not accept that. Postal code, this confuses some people sometimes. Postal code is the same thing as zip code. In most countries of the world, it's called a postal code. When you're ready, click on next. Country phone code. Because FedEx is a global corporation, they, they sometimes have people apply who live in other countries. So they want to know, is, do they have to type, uh, do they have to uh, hit the correct number for that country? In this case, again, United States is at the top of the list. Phone number. 
you use your phone number. I'm going to use the library's phone number. Is there a phone extension? It's optional. When you're ready, click on next. How did you hear about us? Again, there's a down arrow, so click on that to see what our choices are. And sometimes, often they don't provide exactly the right answer for you. In this case, how about their website? No. How about the corporate website? There we go, that's what we're looking for. Perhaps a driver, someone who works for FedEx told you about that. One of the options is, it should be referral. I'm not seeing it. I thought I saw it the first time. In any case, you choose the answer that is best and closest. When you're ready, click on next. Have you ever worked for or currently worked for any FedEx company? No. Oh. Education history. Please notice it's optional. You don't have to tell them about your education. But we're gonna go ahead and add that. Now, again, you add your education. We're going to use fictional Jane Public's education history. Jane went to McKinley High School, good school. Which country, United States is at the top, that's easy and convenient. Which state, Louisiana is not at the top, so we have to scroll down and choose Louisiana. City, Baton Rouge, again, Use good punctuation and so capitalize. What type of institution? It's a high school. You might add another diploma or degree you have, and it could be from a trade school, junior college, undergraduate or graduate degree. Uh, you earned a GED perhaps or other. I'm not sure what other is. In this case, high school. What kind of a degree? It is a high school diploma. I like it when they provide the answers that fit, because sometimes they don't. Description of education, it's optional. We don't need to. Now, if you, if you earned another degree or diploma, you could say, you click on add another, perhaps you earned an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, for example, from Louisiana State University. But we're gonna leave it at one entry. When you're ready, click on next. Residency history. Already they tell us that there's invalid answer, which is strange. So let's click on that and see if we can fix it. Oh, it thinks we started living at that address in December, 2020, that's a problem. So let's try to fix that. Country, United States is at the top. City, state, we have to scroll down to Louisiana. City, Baton Rouge. Zip code, 76. When did we live there? So up to the present, they, they want to know at least five year history of living at that, uh, living at, at, an, at that address. If you've only been at this address for one or two or three years, they want you to provide another address before that. In this case, we've been at this address for let's say 10 years. You have to click on the little calendar that confuses people sometimes. We've been there from 2001. Click on the left arrow to get us to the years that include 2000, excuse me, 2010. We've been at that address from January 2010 to the present. Click on next. Ah, now the website is happy. Do we have any previous names? Have you ever changed your name, such as if you got married? or legally change your name for other reasons. In this case, no. So when you're ready, click on next. Work experience. Well, they're telling us that our answers are invalid. We haven't even had a chance to uh, provide our work history yet. That's a little strange. So let's add some work experience. And they wanna have at least five years. Have I been unemployed, a homemaker or a student? No, it is required. What's, what's a little strange is they want the dates before you provide who you worked for and what your job was. Well, Jane Public worked at High Tech from December 2017. So let's click back to get to 27. Sorry, 2017 is, on the, is right here. From December 2017 to the present. High 
tech title, not what you did, but what was your job title? Jane was a machinist. An employer, uh, was the employer a FedEx company? No. Country required United States. It's marked in red, so it is required. Address, ah, yeah. This is a little unusual. Usually you only have to provide uh, city and state for your employer. In this case, the fictional address of the fictional high tech company is uh, 1111 ABC Street in Baton Rouge. The zip code is the phone number. That's not required. Supervisor is not required. Can we contact? Actually, let's go ahead and put the supervisor. It's Bob, whose phone number, fictional phone number is 225-921-4321. Can we contact to ask about Jane Public? Yeah. Were you subject to photo, federal motor carrier safety regulations? For example, you drove a vehicle over 10,000 pounds and so on? No. Did you perform any other US Department of Transportation or FMC SAR safety sensitive functions that are subject to drug and alcohol testing while employed? Did you drive a CDL vehicle 26,000 pounds or more? No. And for you, the answer may be yes. Why did you leave? You gotta be careful on this one. It's not required, but if you provide a reason for why you are leaving your current job or a previous job, do not put anything negative, such as, I couldn't stand my boss. I do not like to work hard. You want to provide reasons that are positive or neutral. For example, uh, looking for more hours. What did you do? Okay, a machinist with high tech. Jane worked a manual machine and operated. Drill press. Volunteer experience. That's optional. We're gonna we're gonna say no. Let's add. We have to. Ooh, some al answers are invalid. Please fix before adding another entry. Maybe we re they have to have a phone number. That's what was required. Uh, many job application websites will mark with a red star when you have to provide an answer, you have to provide information. FedEx does not assume everything is required unless it specifically says optional. That's a little unusual. Let's add another because they want to have five years of work history. Jane Public also worked for ABC Signs from November 2015 to December 2017. Oops, we have to go back for 2017. December. That was, uh, we're going to speed through this next section. All right, as long as you provided at least five years of work history, when you're ready, click on next. Driver's license. Since we're applying for part-time courier, not Department of Transportation. Now, I'm, good, I'm gonna use my own driver's license information. You provide your driver's license information for example, which state issued it, in this case, Louisiana. And we're going to cut out the next part because we don't want to provide on, in the video my driver's license information, have your driver's license ready and you add your driver's license number, type, and which state issued your name exactly, your first name as it appears on your driver's license. Is there a middle name? your last name as it appears, and what is the expiration date? Again, remember, you have to click on the little 
calendar to call up the calendar pop-up menu. And have you ever been denied a license? Have you ever had your license suspended or revoked? Are there any enhancements? This is optional. And if you've had another driver's license from another state in the last 10 years, they want to know that as well. As I said, I'm going to add my driver's license information and we're going to cut out this part of the video. You add your information and we'll see you on the other side. If you have had a previous driver's license in the last 10 years, this is your opportunity to provide that information. Jane Public, in this case, uh, me, uh, I don't have any such license, so I'm not gonna provide this. When you're ready, click on next. All right, they'd like to know, since you're applying for a driving position, they want to know if you have any experience driving trucks. Have you ever driven a straight truck? Truck. What kind? About how many miles did you drive? And when? Now, for fictional Jane Public, we're going to say, we're going to leave these blank. She never drove a straight truck, never drove a tractor or a semi-trailer, or a tractor with two trailers. Wow. However, Jane does have experience driving a passenger van. Actually, I do. I drove a, I have a Class D license and I drove a passenger van for about uh, 16 years. This is a tough question. How many miles driven? Uh, well, think about how many times did you drive each week and how many miles per, per day and then add it up. Let's, um, let's imagine I've done the math and it comes out to about 20,000. I've driven the passenger van for about 20,000 miles over the span of 16 years. The dates are optional, but let's imagine I know those dates and I'm going to provide those. In this case, from uh, December 1990, uh, 1999, Oops, you may not know the exact day. <coughs> so let's add December 1st. Till when? Until November 2015. There's 2015. November, which day? Uh, I don't know. November 1st. When you're ready, click on next. Have you had any accidents in the last three years? No. All right, voluntary disclosures. This is where they're gonna ask you some questions about yourself and your background. You don't have to answer, but you can. All right, the first question has to do with, are you a veteran? Click on the down arrow and see what your choices are. I am one of those classifications of protected veterans. I identify as a veteran, but not protected. I'm not a veteran, or I'd rather not self-identify my veteran status. Jane is not a veteran. Race, ethnicity with how you identify yourself. Click on the arrow, see what your choices are. Asian, Black, African American, and so on. You can also say you'd rather not specify. In this case, Jane is willing to answer the question to say she is white, not Hispanic or Latino. Gender, you can say I'd rather not say. In this case, Jane says, sure, I'm female. Click when you're ready, click on next. All right, voluntary self-identification of disability. This is interesting. First they put the, the lines and then they explain why you're being asked and how do you know if you have a disability. Take a look at the list. Perhaps one of these applies to you. Could be autism, diabetes, and so on. We're gonna go ahead and put Jane's name. What date we are completing this application, December 2nd, 2020. 
And Jane can say, I do, I don't, I'd rather not answer. In this case, she's going to say, no, I do not have a disability. I do not have any of these conditions. When you're ready, click on next. All right. There's a lot of legal language. We're not going to read through all of this, but basically they are going to do a credit report on you. Do you understand? Basically, you have to agree to that or else you cannot continue. You cannot complete the application. I understand. Fair Credit Reporting Act disclosure. When they do a credit check on you, they're going to gain some information. They tell you what information is included in that report, and you can say, uh, you click on I understand. When you're ready, click on next. Wow, another one. Fair Credit Reporting Act authorization. You are authorizing the company to obtain and use background information on you from a consumer reporting agency. And there's also some specific notices depending on what state you live in. Now, Jane Public is in Louisiana, so none of these apply. But if they do, you can take a look. When you're ready, authorize. I authorize FedEx to do a background and credit check on me. When you're ready, click on Next. This is where you provide elect electronic consent and you're basically authorizing FedEx to do a check on you and to check the information that you have provided. Provides a lot of details. We're not going to read all of this, but you notice it includes authorizing them to do a reference check. Talk to your supervisors, the previous places that you have worked. This certifies that the application was completed by me. This is important um, because what if you ask somebody else to do the application for you, perhaps to give you a kind of advantage? And the information in the application is true and complete to the best of my knowledge. Everything that you have put in your application is true and correct, and you did this application. When you're ready, click on Next. All right, thank you for your interest in employment. This is, this is a little different. They're telling you that if you wanna go back and check your answers, if you need to make any changes or corrections, this is your chance to click on previous and go back and make those changes. If not, you click on yes. This is the last step before you're done. This is a little different. What a lot of job application websites do is you get a review page where they show you all the information and that's when you have a chance to make the corrections. FedEx instead says, you, do you remember that you need to make some changes and go back and make those? Let's imagine that everything is fine. When you're ready, click on submit and then we'll be done. All right, this is what we like to see. Not all job application websites do this but we like it when they do, when they say your application for this position, for this shift has been successfully submitted. We invite you to view the job openings available in our career section and further explore the functionalities of your account. In other words, you can apply for some of the other positions in your area using the information that you've already provided when you applied for this position. If that's what you would like to do, you can click on careers home and apply for some other positions. In this case, let's imagine that we're completely done. Well, thank you very much for watching this. Thank you for your interest. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like button. And if you would like to see more videos from our YouTube channel, please click on the subscribe button and thank you.